This is Rami, the host of Talk to Rami podcast. Before I start my show today, I want to tell you about the recent products that I have received from Wild by Nature. The first one, which is designed for sleeping, legal THC, is sleeping gummies. You should try this. And the second one, which is my favorite one, is a simple CBD drops. Put it under my tongue and I get my day going. If you would like to order these products, check the link in my description. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Talk to Rami. This is Rami, your host. Today on this episode, we're going to talk about life, entrepreneurship, heart, lessons in life. And for that, I have Derek Smith in the studio as a phenomenal entrepreneur, father, and businessman, and went through a lot. But we're going to talk about that. And as I always say, if you learn something, and you like this episode, please share it with other people because you don't know. We all might help one person. And that's why itself is rewarding. Welcome, my friend, Dave. Thanks for having me, Rami. You know, I know we haven't started, but I'm already having a lot of fun. Just, yeah. <laughs> in, the, just in the pregame talks and seeing the setup. This is awesome. Know, thank you so much. So, you know, I'm so happy that you are here. As we, you know, we talk off the camera, as I said, that everyone has a story. Yep. I want to know what is your story. You're a, you're a young entrepreneur, and he's already got a family and mm -hmm. hustling and grinding. And how did you start your business? What you went through in life? Yeah. When you started it, when you were young, you said, "I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't want to work for anybody." Right. Um, so it's been a windy road, to say the least. I never, when I was young, or even when I started in real estate, never did I say I want to decorate houses and run Airbnbs, right? It never once crossed my mind. But at every turning point or hardship, I have learned to make a choice, make a conscious choice to, am I gonna let this be my excuse and let this slow me down? Or am I going to reflect, adapt, adjust, and keep pushing? And so there's been a lot of turning points that have got me to where I am today and more turning points coming, I don't think this is the final phase of my life. As we mentioned earlier, the, yep. the idea of running these short-term rentals is because that was a value that I knew I could offer to my clients and to the people I interact with. However, as my skills continue to grow and as that business continues to grow, it's gonna make more sense to put people into that business, allow them to run it, to continue to provide value and to take my skill sets that will hopefully advance by then and apply them in different ways to reach more people. Um, so to get to this point, I, I went to college, honestly, just to get out of the city. I, that was your reason to just get out it. of the city, go to the college? That was it. <laughs> I, I had a, a kind of rough group of friends, I think, and I thought that if I stuck around at best, I would have some fun. At worst, I might not still be here, right? So I decided I'm gonna take a risk, I'm gonna roll the dice, I'm gonna go to college, even though I wasn't a big fan of school. I was good in school, wasn't a big fan. Um, and I took off to San Antonio, and um, I still wasn't taking life as serious as maybe I should have, right? I'm still having fun, partying, and um, I had a daughter. It wasn't part of my plan, but it was part of a bigger plan and was absolutely necessary and a huge turning point where I could again decide, am I going to be the victim of the situation or am I going to make a conscious effort to make sure that my impact on this situation is as good as possible? So me and the mother of my child, co-parent, we're very civil, we're on the same team which I wish more people saw it that way. We're on the same team of trying to provide the best life for our, our daughter as possible. And so I finished college, um, I came back, and I hit another turning point. It was, do I go get a job 
and get a guaranteed salary with a minimum raise every year and slowly but surely start watching the years pass as I sell my life to someone else? Or do I roll the dice and jump into an industry where I can either fail, like most people do in real estate, or I can make millions of dollars and have a positive impact on hundreds, if not thousands of people. And so I rolled the dice and I got into real estate, um, started off wholesaling, which I'm sure if people have listened to your podcast, they're familiar with what that is. Um, and I hit it another turning point in that I was making these calls. There were people, lots of people who said, I would love to sell my house, but not for the price that you're offering me. As a wholesaler, if you don't have a good price, you don't have a deal. So I could have said, wholesaling is not for me. It's hard. I quit. I'm going to go get that job. Instead, I said, I'm going to put more effort. I'm going to get my license, increase my skill set, and be able to offer more value to these people that I'm talking to. And so that's what I did. And then, so I became an agent. And then a property manager. And then a flipper. And then we flip a house and... I could provide more value if we furnish it because I've seen this Airbnb craze going on. So we did that. And then I had this whole system and processes and team in place to manage a short-term rental. Why not do it for two? And now we're at 15. And um, I'm very glad that I've built that business. But the idea is to be the business owner, not self-employed. And so by systemizing, automating, outsourcing, creating a team, we can reach more people and I can again reflect and apply my skill set to to have a larger reach, bigger impact. But that was as, as I was listening to you, I just I was just thinking that how many people like you went through that kind of life situation, that turning points that you mentioned, mm-hmm. but we have two options. As you mentioned, give in and give up yep. or use that turning point as a fire yeah. to turn around your life, mm-hmm. which is most of the people, they do not realize that those turning point, those failures are not actually failures. Those are the signs yeah. that will show us what are you going to do? Right. Are you going to go to the right? You're going to go to the left. And you decided to change your life. Like you just mentioned, you're very civilized with your, you know, co-parenting. Mm-hmm. And most of the people do not really understand the depth of that decision. Because it is not about you. It is not about her. Mm -hmm. It's all about the kid. It should be. It should be. And, you know, it must be. And unfortunately, a lot of you are out there, a lot of parents that are co-parenting, I'm talking to you, you have to understand, and we are talking, that it's not about you, it's not about your ex, it's about that kid that you brought to this planet. Mm -hmm. And you are, we are responsible for that. Absolutely. If you have something with the mother, the father, just don't get involved with the kid. It's not the kid's fault. Absolutely. You got to do your best because, you know, that kid is going to grow up. He or she is going to go to another turning point. Mm -hmm. And that divorce, that separation that did not handle well is going to damage that kid. Absolutely. And it's going to be a ripple effect. But this is the thing. A lot of people do not recognize what you did, that I have a choice. Absolutely. I can make a good one or I can make a bad one. You have a choice. You can make a good one or you can make a bad one. It's up to you. And nobody's forcing us to make a good choice or bad choice. Right. But for you, what was, what was your fuel? What was that fire that you said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to a school. I'm going to do this. What made you to do that? It was based on what? Um, there, there's a lot of 
smaller things that I think added up. Um, and I actually wasn't planning on talking about this story, but I feel like it might be appropriate now. When I was a senior in high school, I had, I knew people, but I didn't have a lot of friends. I had one guy that every day he and I, only he and I would go to McDonald's together. We would talk. We were the only people who wanted to hang out with each other. Um, and we were a little bit disturbed in some ways. And one of our topics of choice, unfortunately, was suicide. We were not happy people in general. Um, and shortly after high school, he acted on those conversations. Wow. And so sorry to hear that. I, I don't blame myself completely to where I feel like I'm responsible for it, but I cannot be so selfish to not acknowledge that I was in a position to impact this person and I made a selfish, poor, and somewhat evil decision by not at least doing my best to guide in the right direction. And so what I realized is that there are four things in life. We're alive, we're here, we were born, we didn't ask to be, but we are here, right? And then we're gonna die. In the middle- That's giving, amen. <laughs> in the middle, there's only two things. We have experiences, and we meet people, and whether we like it or not, we impact their experiences. And so the only things that we can control are how we are going to experience life. Are we gonna smile through it? Are we gonna frown through it? Are we gonna be nice to people? Are we gonna be mean to people? And the impact that we have on others. And sometimes our natural tendency because of previous traumas or you know the way our parents were, what we saw growing up, or just what the culture is, will give us the easy option, which is often the evil option. Or we can put that little bit of extra effort to have a positive impact on people. And so now, because of that situation and some other ones, um, I try my best. And I say try because I'm a human just like anybody else watching. We are human. I don't expect anyone to be perfect. I apologize for also not being perfect. But nobody's perfect, brother. We Nobody. try. That's all we can do. We well, you know, you best. had those conversations, if may I ask you, that you had those conversations with that individual. Can you tell me what was the nature, what was the conversation for the, for the listeners? Because not, you know, what was, where was the frustration was coming from? Is he didn't know himself? The, the environment that he was yeah. in, or what was it? I think he was a very intelligent young man, and there's a lot wrong with the world, right? There's injustices that happen to us, just in culture. There, there's so many things that we could choose to be mad about, and that's the choice that we made, was to be mad about them, as opposed to putting the extra effort to try to do something about them or to try to have a positive impact. And when I've battled with mental health in that episode as well as others, the thing that has allowed me to get out of it is to not think about myself, not think about all the reasons why I might feel like a victim or all the things that people have done to me or what the world has put me through, but instead we're here this is it, right? I didn't ask to be here. We're, we're here now. How can I positively impact others? And sometimes it takes effort. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. It takes effort. It, but it's because of the ripple effect, you will naturally start to see more light in the world as you bring more light into the world. If everyone you interact with leaves with a smile on their face, whether you sold them something or not, whether they bought your product or not, if you make their day a little bit better, if you increase their faith in humanity just a little bit by being a good person, then you, you did good. You, you had a positive it's impact. It's what on you plant is what you harvest. Yeah. It's like that. But, you know, that was, a, that was a turning point for you, that unfortunate, you know, event. But I can tell you, you could not stop it. You could just guide it. And you do not, you know, 
I've been in the same situation, you know, I served in the military, you know, and not the U- U.S. military, but uh, but lost soldiers, lost my friends, and you always have these things that blaming or just saying, maybe I could do better, maybe I could save them. Yeah. It's, it's out of your hand. You know, you can, you can leave with it, which is I did, mm. but eventually I got over it, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, in this country, I'm telling you, folks, you're listening, mental health, they don't take it seriously. Like mm-hmm. mental, if you say the, the person has got a mental health problem, you know what they do? The first thing, he's crazy. Absolutely. They think he's crazy. But mental health is not being crazy. You might have a difficulty of understanding yourself even disconnecting with your self, with your soul, that can be a mental health. You might be a depressed, that can be mental health. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you are crazy and you have to go to psychiatric hospital. Right. That's what we're thinking in this country. That's why we don't take mental health seriously. All this shooting, all these suicides, mm-hmm. you know, is all this starts with simple conversation in McDonald's. Yeah. Right? Exactly. How many of those conversations have ha- has happened in this country that we didn't pay attention to? We could stop it, but we didn't do it. Right. And I, th- I think a lot of people will minimize what they think their impact will be. Right. Like earlier we were talking about cutting people off in traffic. Yes. Like you're going to get there one minute faster, maybe, but you ruined not only the person's day behind you that you cut off, but also all the people who witnessed it that now have this reconfirmed belief in their head that people are mean, right? Versus if you do the opposite, you let someone in, someone who might have previously thought people were mean might see that and say, hey, maybe people aren't so bad. And then it's, it's the ripple effect. You never know the full effect of your actions. So if you can catch yourself in any moment falling victim to your your urges your tendencies and you can put a little bit of extra effort to help someone or to make them smile or just have a little bit of positive impact on the world please do it please do it that's that's so important i'm so happy you mentioned that because sometimes i see the road rages and it's getting worse in austin Mm -hmm. and i let them go and i say here you go please you be first i'm gonna lose a minute two minutes 30 seconds but it really doesn't worth it yeah i can go and just cut them off and just you know do this and that but it's it's just not worth it right and i'm gonna have a bad day because when you come out of the house you said i'm gonna have a shitty day you're gonna have a shitty day absolutely because you made that choice before you you made that choice and we talk about that everything comes down to our choices you have an option to use those turning point to change your life or you, you stop and just stop and just be there for the rest of your life and do nothing. Or you can go sharpen your skill, go to school, do the things, and be somebody. Yeah. It all comes down to our choices. Or you can be a bad father to your kid and then be a bad co-parent. You mm-hmm. can do that. Yeah. It's not it that be hard. Easier. It's easier. much easier. Yeah. But you don't do it. And when we understand the power of the choice that we can make in life, I think everything else would be easier, don't you think? 100%, 100%. And even though we we acknowledge this, correct me if I'm wrong, there's still gonna be times <laughs> oh, yeah. when it's, you can know better and still do wrong. Like it, it just happened, we're humans, we're not perfect. You know, we make mistakes. We can try. You make mistakes, I make mistakes. I make mistakes every day. Yeah. And if, if I don't make one today, I give myself a point for tomorrow, which is tomorrow. I'm allowed to make two mistakes. This is how it works. <laughs> but mistakes are different with making a bad choices when you know that choice is going to be a bad choice. Right. Yeah. And if you, if you take full responsibility in the fact that even the smallest choices can make a big difference, you, you have a better chance of making a decent impact because that's all we can do here how people will become alcoholic they make a decision to keep drinking Mm -hmm. 
But it's oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I said, you, you did not make a mistake. Mm-hmm. You, made a, you made a bad choice. Yeah. You could easily be out of that environment and not hang around with the people that are alcoholic or just stop after the first drink and say, I'm done until next week. Absolutely. But you made that choice. Yeah. And everything is like, business is like that. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you had that experience. Did you? Sure. Um, I'm actually in an interesting one right now. Um, I have a listing that two other agents have taken this listing, listed it, failed to sell it. And so when the listing came my way, choice number one, do I take these red flags and run? Or do I see what the true issue was and do my best to put that little extra effort to do right by the seller? They're not in the greatest situation. They were misled when they bought the property. So today at three o'clock, I have my fourth call with the city to figure out as much information as possible to not only guide a buyer, to make them more comfortable with moving forward with it, to not only help a buyer's agent to not have a pissed off buyer after they buy something, find out they can't do something there, but to protect the seller, get them the best outcome possible by doing this extra work to protect my broker and to protect myself. And yes, at the end of the day, I'll make a commission. So it's helping my family down the line as well. But there are so many little choices in there that I think can make an impact. And one of the biggest ones, the reason I bring this up is a lot of people would say, you made the choice to talk to the city. You're a good person. You're doing your best. I think if I get on that call and I'm mean to the person on the other end of that call, then they might be mean to the next person on the appointment who's then going to hate working with the city, who then may decide they don't want to invest in real estate anymore, or who doesn't like the whole city in general because of that experience. So by making a conscious effort at three o'clock, I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to ask that person how they're doing instead of just jumping into my problems, right? I think that tiny decision to treat everybody with as much respect as you can muster, not as much as you feel like, but as much as you can put the effort to show uh, it'll make a positive impact on the world. I think I agree with you. I think there are no bad people. There are bad communications. Yes. I been in the situation, the other person was mad and treat me like shit. And you know, I had two options to go and bark at him. Mm-hmm and put him in his place, which is I could, or I went and I said, I know how you did, and I know how you treat me, but what is the problem? How are you doing today? He was tearing up. He said, nobody asked me that before. I am so sorry I treat you like that. I'm so sorry that I talk you that way. I've been going through a lot right now. He was going through a divorce child custody, all that stuff. And I said, brother, I've been there. I understand. But, you know, if you want to take it out of other people, that's going to create a ripple, not only for you, for them. Mm -hmm. And we just talk for 10 minutes. And that happened in the restaurant, you know, 10 minutes. And he gave me a hug and he says, I wish all the people that were like you, I didn't do something different. It wasn't a magic. It was just changing the conversation. Your one decision there changed his life and his family's life. He was already in a rough spot with his kids, with his ex. If you would have gotten in a fist fight with him, which would have been the easy choice to give in to your urges, your desires, then he's either in jail or hurt or something. And his life and his family's life is worse. We have so many like a common problems as a human, all of us. Like divorce, you see it a lot. And then when I told him that, I went through that. Mm-hmm. I went through this cuts. I had this. I had all these issues, and I gave him some guidance. He said, oh, my God, I think you were sent by God. I said, no, I'm another human. But I acted differently. As we go back, that we talk about people if we all act differently and respect each other as we want to be respected it. Mm-hmm. I like what you said, respect. And I'm telling you, if you're listening to this, 
respect other people at you as you want to be respected it. If we kind of master that and then understand it, this world will be the be a beautiful world. Absolutely. Because I believe there are so many good people out there, but they can't talk to anybody or nobody yeah. is there to listen to them. Right. I agree. And uh, I think it it comes back down to like there there's this helplessness in a lot of our population. Like they feel like the world is what it is and we're either doomed or it, like th- they can't have any impact, but you can. Like everybody that you interact with today, if you can make them smile one time, you have impacted the world 100%. That's absolutely true. We have choices as we talk about this. You have a choice to be in the box or you have to choose to be out of the box. Mm-hmm. Imagine you get up in the morning, you're in the box, you have your cereal in the box, you get in the car, you're in the box, <laughs> you come to the office, you're in the box, you have your lunch box, you are in the box, everything you see, we are in the box. But as soon as you step out of it and see the world differently and see, oh my God, there are so many other people around me that I can connect with and learn from and actually create some value, it's going to come back at you. Absolutely. And I, I think that's one thing that a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, they have like this tweaked sense of what value is. Like they think that means it's all in the product or the service. It's transition. That's what they tell you. Exactly. It's it's all about money for good or service. And that, that's it's it. It's not. But like they can, they can buy it and not be happy. And then d- did you really do good by the world? Or vice versa. You can not show them the true value of this and then... They don't buy it and they're unhappy. Well, then you, you still didn't do good. It, so it doesn't matter how the transaction goes. It matters how you impacted this person's life. That's where the real value comes from. And that's that's where it comes back as well. You, you, you are right. Value is not just tangible things like, hey, I, I, I created a value. I give him 100 bucks yeah. or I help him to double his sales. Okay, those are values that it's very common. Like, but if you say, I talked to this person, he was going to kill himself, but I talked to him. I got him out of it. That's the value. Yeah, I take that's, that over 100 bucks here. Oh, day. yeah. That's what is actually the, the value to create it to goes for many, many, many years after yeah. that. You know, people, they do not understand that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they, I hope at least one person watching this just interacts with one person I hope more than one person watches this. No, (laughs) I'm just joking with you. (laughs) But I I just hope someone interacts with one person differently. Like we mentioned earlier, when when people are talking about choices and what our purpose in life is, the strong religious folks, I'll pick on Christians for a second, they have their rule, their 10 rules, their 10 commandments. They say, if I follow these things, I'm a good person. I'm guaranteed a good afterlife. Because I follow these 10 rules. You can follow those 10 rules, cut people off in traffic on the way home to mistreat your spouse and continue generational curses with your children and take advantage of people in your business. None of those things are on that list. Like you're not breaking the rules, but you can still be a bad person and vice versa, right? Like you can have mistakes in your past or bad choices in your past, but you can make the conscious effort today to do better by people each step along the way and like if you if you believe that your purpose is to I'm to say you're in my shoes my, my purpose is to be the, the best realtor in the city cool when, when you go home are you present for your family that's one that I struggle with I, I struggle with it often but I make the conscious effort to my purpose when I'm in the office is do best by my clients have positive impacts along the way as soon as I get home my purpose changes now it's Tell my kids I love them. Support my wife. Like You can have several purposes even throughout the course of one day and you have to make the conscious effort to, to have a positive impact on all of them, to play each of those role, those roles to the best of your ability. I, I, I think I'm, I'm 100% with you on that, but I think most of us, we don't do that because we make everything so complicated. 
like you say it's so easy that oh this is this is good yeah I can do that I have a purpose here and I go home for you it might be easy but for, for other people that they're listening or watching sometimes they're struggling absolutely and they're struggling I think because still they did not understand the power of giving even to yourself because when you give to yourself and be kind to yourself would be kind to others which is it comes down to you had all those turning points in your life and you had more than that and you came to the decision that I want to be kind with myself and I want to do certain things that will add value to my life therefore would add value to your wife yeah and to your clients absolutely and it's I, I apologize to anyone who heard that and if I made it sound easy because it's it's not it's, it's not easy it's very difficult and every day I struggle and some you days pay I your succeed, price some days I don't um, but yeah the best thing we can do is just is just try you know um, there are certain things that happen that we can't take back and I have certain regrets or certain debts that I feel like I might owe to the world and I try not to let those stop me but instead encourage me to make up for them like some people call that karma like if you think you have bad karma well go do a bunch of good to the world and maybe it'll erase it but what I found in the process of doing that is whether it's erased or not whether I'm doomed or not I have found a little bit of peace and happiness in the process of trying to make up for that bad karma in, really? in the process of doing good for others even though at first it was somewhat transactional I had learned to love it and to find joy in seeing other people smile even if it's hard for yourself to smile make someone else smile it, it'll it'll come back that's that's I believe you know because the happiness it comes from you know doing things that not only make you happy but help other people as Absolutely. well and that's what I think you 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 were doing and you are still doing but the you know you and I are 30 years apart that's that's a, that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's the age it happens fast doesn't yeah it? it happens fast when I see you you know you're almost 27 I would be 57 and I'm thinking that okay this young young adult young entrepreneur with 27 you have an amazing mindset thank you yeah you know is I think more people they can be like you more people they can turn around the bad situation into good situation by making better choices absolutely because we are constantly talking about these folks you're listening you're watching we're talking about choices that we make in our lives you make good choices you have a good you know something out of it but if you make bad choices bad thing is going to happen but i still don't know why people sometimes they make bad choices is it comes with a greed comes with i don't know what it is it, it's what do you tough. think it is I, I definitely don't have it figured out otherwise i wouldn't make any more bad choices but the the best idea or concept that i've come to with that is a little bit of human nature genealogy our lineage like for example a lot of people have violent urges right we talked about this one earlier you if you have a, this violent urge inside of you there are ways to scratch that itch that are safe healthy and are actually good choices like join a gym right or go to music festivals and open mosh pits because guess what everyone's smiling everyone's happy everyone is scratching that itch with you and getting that out of their system in a sense to where if you bottle that up instead you're going to have road rage or you're going to go home and be mean to your family like you can take whatever urge or need that you feel like you have due to human nature or your lineage and channel it in a more healthy productive and positive way so like violence is the, kind of an extreme one but one that's more common I think more people could relate to is the urge to socialize 
Like it is a natural human instinct, a natural human need to interact with other people. And you can artificially scratch that itch by scrolling through social media. And you will feel like you got your socializing out of you the way. You get your dopamine going on. Exactly. Or you can pick up the phone, reach out to distressed property owners and find ways to help them. Guess what? Either way you socialized, but one way you had a positive impact on the world and one way you wasted two hours of your life that you'll never get back and have nothing to show for it. So it's, it's a conscious choice. How are you going to handle your emotions, your urges, your, your nature, your life, your time? I out. always, I always say that, you know, you know, motion comes from emotions. Like the way you act, the way you walk, the way you talk is all comes from up there, from your emotions that it bottle up or, you know, you just hold it in there. Like mm-hmm. that frustration and anger, yeah. then your, like your emotions would be in like a fight. It would be, you know, Absolutely. some sort of, you know, violent. And if, you know, you hold on that bad emotions, the bad thoughts and negative thoughts, and then the motion would be, you know, doing something that you will regret, like making a bad decision. You think you're not worth it. You're not applying for that job or you're not doing certain things that you think is not worth it or for you, you're not worth it. You do all that stuff. But I, I strongly believe that we are social animals. Mm-hmm. You said it. We all social animals and you watching, you are a social animal, you know, and we all need that attention and some of us we get through artificial connections like facebook instagram and all the other social media platforms we have followers we have connections the good one is linkedin i love linkedin and i get a lot of requests and then when i get the linkedin request i ask the one thing how can i serve you and then if they send me something that, hey, we have this platform, all this, we're going to generate, I said, that's not serving. How can I serve you? Mm-hmm. And then I rejected a lot of, you know, connection requests mm-hmm. because of that. And 90% of the people that I am connected with, I am connected some sort of through the phone calls, FaceTiming, Zoom, or some kind of ra- more than the just being a digital right. connection. Yeah, because you want to I have wanna get the to meaning know of connection. Yeah, right? we, we want to know that person. And it's the same thing outside. You might have five people connected to you know, but you really enjoy that conversation. Yeah. We are unfortunately, like, we are in the this social media gel that we're just in it and sitting and we think that we got thousands of thousand friends, but you actually don't have that. Right. And you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. And I, like it, it comes, if this is your first time realizing this, right, if you're watching on social media and watching yeah. this right now, you might feel a little bit attacked, but this is, this could be a turning point in your life, right? Like, are you going to, continue to scroll hopefully you at least finish watching this interview (laughs) but then after that you have the choice of how am I going to spend my socializing time which I do need in some way shape or form just go out there yeah and find a way to help people and as your skill set grows like you you can always help somebody some way but as your skill set grows exactly how you can provide the most value to somebody will change over time have you heard this before who needs my help we say this a lot. Who needs my help? Yes, there are a lot of people out there. Yeah. They need your help. You're watching, listening. I can tell you right now. Derek agrees with that. <laughs> you can help somebody. We all can help one another. That's why in my podcast, I always say, this is a learning platform for me. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, you have a question for Derek, you for me, We will get back to you. I personally will get back to you. Just DM me and I get back to you. Have a question? Ask me. If I don't know it, I'll find the answer. But I would love to talk to you. That's what we can do to help other people. 
is so easy. It is, but it does take a little bit of effort. Exactly, and that goes back to what? Choice. Yep. Absolutely. We can make that choice. Yeah. I can make that choice to respond to that comment or question or just ignore it. Right. But if I do, I might help one person. Yeah. And even if it's not something you can monetize. And I feel like a lot of people, especially the ones who, who follow me and who watch my content, they, and it could be my fault, kind of so focused on business where it's, if I can't get a transaction out of this, then it's not worth my time. And I, I strongly disagree with that statement. I, I don't think that's the case at all. There's been times where, like, for example, I host a monthly meetup. There's been people who walk in who there's no way ever, well, maybe a 1% chance, that I'll ever get a transaction with this person. And a lot of people would say, okay, well, welcome, make yourself at home, and go away. I spend a good 10 to 20 seconds, however long it takes, to make that person smile, laugh, feel welcome, and see who I can introduce them to. I am financially getting nothing out of that, but I had a positive impact on this person. I had a positive impact on the way that they see networking in general. And if I make a connection for them, even if it has nothing to do with me, then I provided value to that person. I made the choice to spend an extra 10, 20 seconds to provide value. And why do you think more of us, we don't do that? It's effort. I'm asking you, you listening and watching, why, why you don't do that? You know, why more <laughs> of the people don't do that? Yeah, it's effort. It, it's easier to focus on yourself, to take the easy way out versus to just put a little extra effort to focus on the other person for a second. Even though it's harder, it's better. It's the right choice. Always. If you can put a little extra effort to actually provide value, whether in the form of a good or service or a connection or joke even, like just put that A effort. lot of people, Derek, they, they, you know, I, I hear this again, you know, yeah, it's, it's about me. I don't know how I'm going to ha- help that person, you know, what possibly I can do for that person when I have so much problem myself. Mm-hmm. But your problem, this is the people don't understand. Your problem might be a solution to somebody else. Mm. Your problem might be an eye-opening for somebody else. Your struggle might be the same struggle that person is going through it. People do not understand that. They think that they have the biggest problem in the world. Yeah. Like, I'm getting divorced. That's the biggest things that I have. But so many people, they got divorced. Right. So many people, they bankrupt. So many people, they lost their father, their mother, their, their loved ones, their friends, and all that stuff. But how can we be there for each other, for one another, to help and create more values? That's the question. Mm-hmm. I think it's case by case. Like if somebody's in a position where my professional services are in order, I'm going to perform them to the best of my ability. If that's not what they need, and I can send them somewhere else, introduce them to someone, or just try to brighten their day, then do that. Like do, do what you can. That's that's how I define try your best. Like just because you might not be the full answer or the full solution to somebody, that doesn't mean that you can't contribute. You can't spend 10, 20 seconds to put the extra effort to help. And even if your help is like someone's going through a divorce, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not your next wife, but I might be able to lighten the mood. If nothing else, I feel like that's worth the effort. Yep. What is in horizon for you in coming years? We're getting close to 2024, brother. Mm -hmm. What is in horizon for you? So at the moment, we are building out the short-term rental management portfolio. So we manage short-term rentals that other people own for the most part. Um, and that we're structuring more as a business that could run with or without me. So I'm phasing myself out of the day-to-day activities there. Um, but we can provide value to people in that way. To this day, the best thing that I can do for people is help them buy and sell real estate, especially if they are of the investment mindset. Um, in the future, I think that because of my ability to kind of see people 
as people, regardless who they pretend to be or whatever traumas they wear on their face. Face value. Right. I, um, I think that I can have a larger impact by coaching or influencing a group of people who can then go out and reach more. And so that's why I'm kind of stepping out of my comfort zone, getting on more podcasts, putting myself out there more because yes, the best value I can provide right now based on my skill set is to help people with a big decision, right? Investing in real estate or buying or selling real estate. It is a big one. And that's a big one. Um, I do think that I can reach more in the future by empowering more people to do that the same way that I am. That's very rewarding, man. And I, 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 I tell you uh, this, and I tell, I told you before that, that I'm really proud of you, man. You have done so much. Thank you. And you went through a lot, a lot of turning points, but you turned them around very good. It was hard. I know it was hard. Been there, done that, but at the end, what is matter is for you and the people you love and live with and be happy and help as many people as possible, we can help yeah. with what we have. And I always tell people, helping is not giving money. <laughs> it's not transactional. You can help people with what you have, with what you can do right now. You can help so many people that will appreciate it. Absolutely. But thank you, buddy. Thank you for being here. And I wish you the best of luck. And uh, we're going to talk soon again, talk about a lot of this stuff. But where people, they can find you if they're going to message you. If you have any question for Derek, here you go, where they can message you. <laughs> you can put a comment. You know, he's going to see it. We will let him know. But Thank you. Um, so on almost every social media platform, I'm at Derek the Dealsmith. Um, you can just email me, Derek at DealsmithRealty.com. Or like you said, comment on this yep. or come to one of our networking events. I am planning on crashing yep. Yep. all of your events and then I host a monthly one as well. Anybody's welcome. Um, the more people that I can reach and impact, the I'm happy to do so. I look forward to seeing you next time, brother. Thank you, Ron. Take it it's easy. been a pleasure. Thank you.